It was the world's first great civilization, springing to life on the banks of the Nile. Egypt, in all its monumental glory. Glimpses of those ancient times still abound today. Sometimes large, built to be seen, but more often smaller and hidden away. And all of it might have vanished without a trace if the Egyptians hadn't been obsessed with death and preserving what was once alive. To the Egyptians, the afterlife was as real as this life. A soul on its journey needed food, shelter, companionship. So the Egyptians filled their tombs with gifts and with decorations that reflected the soul's earthly journey. Those tombs still have a story to tell, if they can be found. South of the Delta, near the banks of the Nile, is a place called Saqqara. Here, nearly 5,000 years ago, the Egyptians built their first pyramid to house the body of a pharaoh, in the shape of a stairway to heaven. In the centuries that followed, Egyptians by the thousands were entombed at Saqqara. And one of the prime locations was a cliffside with a commanding view of the Nile Valley. During the New Kingdom, when the Egyptian Empire was at its height, people with connections to the pharaoh wanted to be buried here. And they were. <laughs> Today, those men and women are being disinterred. French archaeologist Alain Zévy has been overseeing the excavations for the past two decades. If somebody uh, could tell me uh, years and years ago that I should spend uh, so many months and years here all together, I couldn't believe it. Sometimes you just wonder what you are doing there, playing with sand or doing things like this when you are... No, not really a kid, <laughs> but as I realized suddenly that I was doing exactly what I do. But Zavi's dream started out more like a nightmare. The first rooms he uncovered were filled with cat mummies, thousands of them, remnants of the animal cults that flourished during the last Egyptian dynasty. Animal cults that flourished during the last Egyptian dynasties, when cats were raised and sacrificed by the millions. But Zavi's team also found more than cats. They found a shaft leading down, filled with things from the past. They kept digging, through one level and another and another. Then, at a depth of about 70 feet, they found something. Scattered in the rubble were signs that after years of digging, they had reached the burial chamber. Among the items, a canobic jar, used to hold entrails and vital organs. And its lid. The jar was made out of alabaster, but a lot of what they found afterwards was made out of gold. All of these treasures, and many more, were buried with the mummy of a high-ranking official who served during the reign of the pharaoh Akhenaten. Zavi had found his first New Kingdom nobleman. It was time to go looking for more. Zavi's team went to work behind the cliff face. It took years to excavate the labyrinth of corridors, shafts, and rooms that had been hollowed out of the limestone during the New Kingdom. A 
Along the way, Zivi's team has found other tombs belonging to Egypt's rich and famous. And they've just uncovered another one. Every room has something to tell us, but it's not always written down. This time, it is. There was sand, and with, I had a small lamp with me, and uh, I saw the, the lady. The lady. Images of her adorn the walls of her chapel, where friends and relatives came to honor her. Her body would have been buried deeper in the tomb. When conservators uncover more of the walls, more pictures of the lady come to light. Everything suggests she was a woman with influence. Very quickly, I understood that this tomb belongs to on, only a, a woman. This is very exceptional because this tomb is huge. So she certainly <coughs> had a kind of royal favor. Moreover, she has a lot of titles uh, showing that she, she was much appreciated. I was looking for a name and I found it here the wet nurse who fed the flesh of the god. Zavi translated her name as Maya, and he quickly learned the reason for her lofty status. In one image, Maya faced an effeminate young man wearing a pharaoh's headdress. This was the god Maya had nursed. His name was Tutankhamun, but we know him today as King Tut. King Tut has been a household name ever since British archaeologist Howard Carter made the find of the century in the Valley of the Kings. On November 26, 1922, Carter thrust a candle through a door that had been sealed for 3,000 years and got the thrill of a lifetime. He had found the burial chamber of a new kingdom pharaoh who died before his 20th birthday. But unlike most royal tombs discovered in the past, this one hadn't been plundered. In room after room, a display of treasures beyond the imagination awaited his gaze. Tutankhamun was buried in three gold coffins. Inside was a solid gold mask. A golden statue of the young king stood nearby. A gilded throne showed King Tut side by side with his child bride, possibly his half-sister. Carter's discovery of Tut's tomb and all its treasures told us a great deal about the boy king's death. But there has always been a mystery surrounding his birth. He was probably the son of Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh who worshipped only the sun instead of the traditional pantheon of gods. Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti had six daughters. Some of them seen here crawling on their parents, a domestic snapshot from the past. But the young Tut is never shown in the family portraits. That means his mother was probably a secondary wife who died in childbirth. The infant pharaoh would have needed a wet nurse, and apparently he got one. The Lady Maya who was almost certainly a member of the pharaoh's inner circle. A royal wet nurse in the 18th dynasty is not uh, just a nanny, but is a woman of the court, because giving uh, the milk, uh, feeding, as it's written, feeding the, the flesh of the, girl, of the god, the king, of course not anybody can do this. What is fantastic is the, the feeling of uh, love you, you feel between these two people, and especially the woman towards the king, we should have the feeling that there was a big affection, yes, maybe more be between the king and uh, the wet nurse. And, judging by the elaborate tomb that was built for her, the boy king returned that affection. <laughs> 